we're ready for the marvelous derivation of the magnetic field, the magnetic force, using special relativity and electric field concepts. We have electrons in this wire moving to the left, where the spacing between the electrons and the spacing between the positive charges are the same. And that's necessary because we know that this is a neutral wire and the densities need to be the same. So as viewed here in a laboratory frame where Q is at rest, they cancel out and there's no sideway force. Now the positive current is taken to go in the opposite direction of the electron, so I have that going to the right, and current is your Q, your charge divided by your time as the charges pass by. Now here is the basic idea. When this charge moves to the right and it looks back, it sees the positive charges moving to the left at speed V and looking back, and it sees the electrons moving at a greater speed because they're traveling at V naught and the wire is traveling at V, both to the left. So it sees more Lorentz contraction for the electrons compared to the positive charges, and that means it'll see greater negative density. Now this positive charge will then be pulled or attracted to the wire, and that's your sideways force, and that's due to the magnetic force. We arrive at it from special relativity and Coulomb's law, the electric force. Marvelous. That's it. You understand the basic idea. The rest is going to be mathematics to get it to work out with formulas. We are going to use the infinite line of charge for the electric field, which is the charge density times 1 over 2 pi r and the epsilon sub naught where r is a distance away from the line of charge. We derived that in a previous chapter. And since the electron density is going to win as we look at it from the k prime frame, so we put the primes on there, I have the electron density here minus the density of the positive charges. And the force will be upward. We'll see a net electric field pulling the positive charge upward. So let's look here at the three frames of reference. The laboratory frame is the K frame. The K prime frame is our usual frame moving to the right speed V. And the K double prime frame will be our electrons moving to the left at speed V naught. When we are in the K prime frame looking back we'll see the positive charges moving to the left at speed v so this beta v over t the c here v over c is relevant for the positive charges moving to the left when the moving charge q looks back and sees the electrons zip into the left that's going to be a total velocity given by the relativistic addition of the V naught and the V because the electrons move at V naught relative to the wire and the wire is moving at V all gone to the left. So you know how to do that. That's our relativistic addition formula here. And now we're ready to look at the equation that puts all this together. Here we look at the density of the positive charges as seen by the moving frame. The moving frame K prime frame looks back and sees the positive charges moving to the left. Well how do you get their Lorentz contraction? Well you take always the proper length, the frame you're looking at here is the laboratory frame, so that's L sub lab, and it's moving to the left at speed V from the point of view of the K prime frame. So we hit it with its Lorentz contraction factor and we're done. When we look in that moving frame, K prime, at those electrons, they're moving at a greater speed, the relativistic addition of the two speeds, and you hit it with the proper length, the separation of the electrons in its own frame. So simply following the rules, we can keep these things straight. And that gives us this formula when we apply the constants and the 1 over r dependence for the lines of charge, infinite lines of charge. Now the first step in the calculation is to replace this L double prime in terms of L lab. That is very easy to do. 
you simply go to the L double prime frame and hit it with its Lorentz contraction factor. Now I'm in the lab frame looking at it, so the electrons, remember, moved at a left at speed V naught. So that's the proper way to set that up, the Lorentz contraction. And when you do that, you can eliminate the L double prime. Now you're going to be working out these details. I'm just giving you the general idea so you understand what you're doing from the physics point of view. So when we do that, we are going to plug in for the beta sub t, and that's going to make things look a little messy. And here's our practice problem. When you put the beta sub t in there, you get what looks kind of messy, but it will simplify. It will simplify to this. Now when you get down this far, to get your force, you just hit this with Q because Q times the E is the force. Now we're still looking all at all this in the K prime frame and we want to transform to the lab frame and here is how you transform forces very easy when the forces are in the Y direction because there's no Lorentz contraction in the Y direction you're just dealing with the time the time in the laboratory frame and the time here in the prime frame and that's your familiar time dilation formula we derived earlier. So you're going to make that substitution to get rid of the T prime. So you go ahead and do that, working out the details, and then you get the force in the laboratory, uh, from the laboratory perspective by that transformation. You get this formula. And when we get this formula, we pull some constants here together, the c squared and the 1 over epsilon sub naught, and we're going to define this as another constant for like the magnetic field. And when we do that, we're going to look at this here, and I'm going to show you that this here is nothing more than the current. So for the uh, current, you basically look at here this formula Q over L lab times V naught is going to be your current. And one way to see that is that your current is Q over T. And since the velocity of the electrons you know, are moving V naught, so V naught is the separation distance in the lab frame divided by T. So once when you have that, you can rearrange things to get V naught over L lab is 1 over T, and then when you hit that with Q, you have Q over T, which is I, and that's what you have in there. So that's very nice. When you do that, you'll then wind up with a nice equation that has parameters here of your moving test particle, Q and V, and then here is stuff that we're going to define as the magnetic field information. So that magnetic field here, part, and the magnetic field field here we're going to look at because of the symmetry we're going to give it the theta hat all right now we're going to come back and look at this more carefully with the, our original diagram let's come back here with the original diagram and the original diagram the way we have set up the magnetic field it it's, it's circle like this you put your right hand thumb going this way and we're coming along like that we're, we're going into the page here and that's the B vector and when you cross the V vector with the B, it'll come up like this. And that's exactly what we want, the sideways force. So this will work. This is all consistent. Once again, I'm doing this rather quickly because you have the notes and you're going to work through the calculation to get this marvelous result. And here we have the Lorentz force equation, how charges respond to electric fields and magnetic fields, and all do to special relativity and the Coulomb force.